what we're going to do is we're going to be installing a Floyd Rose style bridge on a guitar that doesn't have one. The first thing I do is I tape off the work area. This not only protects the finish, but what it does is it gives me something to write on. It gives me a workspace. I'm putting a straight edge down the side of the neck and then I'm scribing a line. This tells me where my center is going to be for the neck. So between those two lines, dead center, well, that's the center of my neck. And that's what I need to be following. That's going to be the guide to everything right here. If you don't get that right, you're gonna be making a lot of mistakes. So what we have to do is we have to measure from the very front of the trim to the very edge of the saddle where the string stops, right when it starts leaving the saddle. And we're getting about a half inch. Now this is what we have to end up removing from the scale length of the guitar. This guitar is 26 inch scale length. So I'm marking 25 and a half inches on the tape. So when the trim sits inside there and the string passes the beginning of that saddle, right where that string sets will be 26 inches. You'll see that I'm gonna be using a square to find all of the edges and sides and I'm marking them on the tape. I'll put the center of the trim right there on that center line so that way I know everything is right and I'm measuring everything over and over and over again because like the old adage measure twice cut once anything and everything that you can measure on that that trim you're going to need to do it even if you have a template for another brand of trim there's so many different variances with these licensed trims that if you just automatically assume it's the same as the one you're using you can ruin things so just keep measuring over and over and over. You're going to see that I'm using triangles and I'm using squares a lot to make sure everything is at right angles. Everything is straight, everything is right, and everything is based off of that center line. you'll need to measure everything, um, including the block, what's underneath. Those come in different sizes. So you need to make sure that you know exactly where that block is going to be stopping. And what I mean by that is the front shelf, this is where the posts sit, literally right behind that. If that's exactly where the block stops, that means anytime that you end up using the trim and you let go of it, it's always going to stop right back flat to its normal spot. It'll never go sharp, but it also means that you're never gonna be able to pull back on it to get any higher pitch. I generally will allow this to be in the center of that cavity, so that way I have the option of either pulling back on the trim or moving forward on the trim. As far as the posts go, there's usually a U that has been cut into the base plate of the trim. The lowest part of both sides, take a measurement between those. That's generally what your spacing is gonna end up being, but keep taking measurements over and over and over, and then you won't make a mistake. What I'm doing as far as the template, I'm using double stick tape and I'm using some scrap pieces of maple that are flat. They're perfectly straight on one side. And then that way, my template bit that's in my router can follow those lines and it's just like having a template.
I'll remove them and I'll place them down again for each different depth that I need to go. The rear of the trim generally is a little deeper. Now I could keep doing exactly what I was using the scrap pieces of wood, but instead I decided to use a template of mine for the sake of speed to continue. And I'm drilling holes right inside there so that way I know where my cavity for the claws and the springs need to be. After you have done all of that, there's going to be a few spots that you're gonna end up having to clean up. You can clean them up with a Dremel, or you can use a very sharp chisel to clean these areas up. But the bridge should be able to move freely. Right now I'm using a permanent marker, just so that way when I look down at there, I can see what it's going to look like after everything has been painted and everything is complete. And then I test for movement, making sure everything is good. Thanks for spending some time with me, guys. Hopefully you learned something from this, and if you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, place them in the comment section.